Good afternoon. Can you see my PowerPoint? Can you see my PowerPoint? Okay, let's wait for the others. Good afternoon, everyone. I only have six students at the moment. If uh, while waiting for the others, I want you to prepare your grammar book. Please prepare your grammar book and we will continue our topic, okay? We will review first and then we will continue with our topic last meeting, okay? We still have two minutes to wait for the others, okay. Prepare your grammar book. And I want you to open your book on page, page 40, page 40. Page 40. Page 40. Okay, it's already two. Where did we end up last time? Where did we end up last time? What is our topic last meeting? Anyone? Well, we only have 10 students right now. Mm -hmm. Pre, what is our topic last meeting? Mm -hmm. What is our topic last meeting? Pre, any idea what is our topic last meeting? Last Monday, what I last Tuesday, what did we talk about last Tuesday? Hmm? Anyone? Anyone who can tell me what is our topic last meeting? We talk about what? We talk about we talk about what did we talk about last meeting? Anyone who can tell me? Where is none? None are you here? What is our topic last meeting? We talk about what?
Allah. Anyone? Hello, where are you? How about Wasu? Wasu, what is our topic last meeting? Hmm? What is our last topic? What are our, what is our topic last meeting? We talk about future tense. Okay. Um, are we finished answering this one? Practice 20. Can you look at your book? Are we finished answering practice 20? Look at practice 20. Are we finished answering it? Yes or no? Are we finished answering it? Anyone? No. Not yet. How about um how about practice 17? Are we finished? 17. Sit dead. Finish. Yes or no? No. Right? Last time we end up talking about cert, uh, degrees of certainty, right? Yes or no? Sure, very sure, almost sure, and not sure. Am I right? That is our last topic, right? Yes or yes. no? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then I let you play, right? Okay. Are we finished answering practice 15? Pre, are, are we finished answering practice 15? Yes or no? Not yet? Are we finished answering practice 15? No. No? Okay. Let's have a review first. Let's have a review on our topic last meeting before we answer Practice 15, okay. First, what do we mean by degrees of certainty? Can you remember what is a degree of certainty? Anyone? Maitawin, can you read? Can you read what is a degrees of certainty? Okay, sure. The future is... Uncertain, we know the past, we know the person, we do not know the future, we can be 100 person. Sure, or certain about the past and the person, but we can never be 100 person. Okay. Certain about the future in English, there are several structures, structure and tense to talk about the future. It is usually the degree of certain certainty about the future that the clear. Ah, uh, or show of choice, to, sorry, of to the structure, the structure, or change. Very good. Okay. Last time we also talked about that we can show how certain we are about the future by using modal verbs and other expression. First, for modal verbs, we can use modal verbs such as will. Might, may, could, and adverbs such as probably and definitely. When do we use the adverbs definitely in degrees of certainty? Can you remember? Can you remember? When do we use the word definitely, the adverb definitely, in the degrees of certainty? We use it when we are very, very sure. If you are very sure of something, you use your modal verbs and your adverb definitely. Okay. How about 
when we talk about things that we are sure, what do we use? We use modal verbs such as will or won't. How about for the things that we are almost sure? What do we use? Modal verbs and your adverbs? Probably. Okay, always remember in very sure, we use definitely. In almost sure, we use probably. And for not sure, here we can use our modal verb might or might not. When you are not sure, we can also use may, could, and may not. However, we don't usually use could not or couldn't to talk about the future. Okay. For other expressions, we can use be bound to, be likely to, think, and doubt. For very sure here, we can, we can use other expressions such as bound to, certain to, certain that, no chance that, no way that. Of course, if we have the word no, it means particularly negative sentence. Okay, next for the sure, for the things that we are sure, we can actually use the word sure, sure that, are you sure that, or your modal verbs. For almost sure, we can use likely to, unlikely to, a good chance that, not much, not much chance that, Thinks, I don't think, doubt, expect, and will. For not sure, here we can use also a chance that might think, might, I'm not sure that I'll be. Now, always remember the degrees of certainty, okay? Now, I want you to open your book and let's answer practice 15. What page is practice 15? Sorry, I don't have a book right now. I don't have a copy of the book. Wait, let me check. Sure. Please open your book on page 39. 39. Is it 39? Page. Yes, okay. Please open your book on page 39. And it says on our activity here, how certain the, is the speaker? Check the correct box. Okay, for number one, it's already done. You'll probably hear from our office. It's like 90% certain. Almost sure. Next. How about Alan may not finish his work on time? What do you think is the degree of certainty? Alan may not finish his work on time. What do you think? 190, 50. 50. 50. Please put a check. Put a tick. Very good. Next, Eva may call later. Eva may call later. 190, 50. 50. What do you think? Mm, 50. Very good. How about this one, number four? Carlos is prob probably going to buy a new car. 100% or 90%? What do you think? 90%. 90%. Very good. How about number five? Maybe Sanji is going to study architecture. What do you think? Maybe Sanji is going to study architecture. What do you think? 190 or 50? Anyone? Anyone? 50. 50%. Okay. How about number six? Let me call someone. How about number six? Maybe Nipich. What do you think about number six? You will find the key in my top drawer. 100%. Hmm? What do you 100%. think, Nipich? 100%. 100%. Very good. How about 
How about Mm. How about natakan? Natakan number seven. How many percent? One hundred percent. Amira is going to drive to California. Very good. How about number eight? Natawat. Eric is probably going to fail this class. One hundred ninety fifty. Ninety. Ninety. Percent. Very good. How about, let me call Warawalan. Can you hear me, Warawalan? Warawalan? Hmm. How about Natakamon? Natakamon, can you answer number nine? Can you answer number nine, Natakamon? Maybe some will be here later. 150 or 50? 50%. 50%. Very good. How about number 10, Patrawadi? Patrawadi, can you hear me? Patrawadi, how about number 10? Patrawadi is not responding. Let's call Willa Cindy, number 10. Okay. Uh, the plane will probably arrive on time. What is the answer, Prel? Prel, what is the answer, number 10? 90%. 90%. Number 11, non? The judge may not agree with you. What is the answer? 50%. Hmm? 50%. And last, number 12. Number 12, let's call Natapat. Natapat Noang Sen. Natapat, what is the answer? Number 12. Nine, 190 or 50. I probably won't be here tomorrow. Mm. 100, 90, or 50? What do you think? 19. 90%. Okay. Are you finished? Finish? Okay. Next, let's proceed to practice 16. Practice 16, answer each question, use the words in parentheses, and pay special attention to word order. Okay, look at number one. Are Joel and Lily going to have a simple wedding? Now we're going to use degrees of certainty probably. Yes, they are probably going to have a simple wedding. How about number two? Who can answer number two? Who can answer number two? Anyone? None, can you try to answer number two? Read and answer number two. None, we cannot hear you. Can you read and answer number two? Are they going to invite a lot of people? No, they are probably going to have a lot of people. Very good. Since I cannot fit the answer on, uh, on the space provided, I put the answer here. They are... Probably not going to invite. Sorry. My two is doubled here. I need to. Okay. Next, how about number three? How about number three? Preo, can you answer number three? Yes. Can you read an answer? Start. Will they have a wedding reception in Lily's garden? 
or will they have it at a hotel? They are not sure. They may. 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 They. They may have the ceremony in Lily's garden. Then next, next use maybe. Maybe they will have it at a hotel. Next, number four. Who wants to answer number four? wants to answer number four? Nipich, can you answer number four? She's trying to save money, so she she's... Run, she may run her wedding dress. She may rent. She may rent very good. She may rent her wedding dress. How about number five? Number five, Ananchai. Ananchai, can you answer number five? Ananchai, can you answer number five? Why well, you are not responding? Papawarin, Papawarin, can you hear me? Yes. Can you answer number five? Read first, read. Will she decide? Will she decide that she won her own dating date? Or use probably. She? She? Is probably mm -hmm. she will probably decide very good that she wants her own wedding dress. Thank you, Papa Warin. Is it Papa Warin? Papa Win. Papa Warin. Okay, thank you. Next, let's call Wasu. Wasu, can you answer number six? Read and answer, Wasu. Will Joey feel really relaxed on his wedding day? Will he be nervous? Uh. Joey may not be very really relaxed on his wedding day. He may be a little nervous. He may be a little very good. Joel may not be very relaxed on his wedding day. He may be a little nervous. Okay, how about Purita? Purita, can you answer number seven? Purita, can you answer number seven? Read and answer number seven. Purita, can you read and answer number seven? Are they? Rita is not responding. Maybe we can call Chamawi. Chamawi, can you answer number seven? Um, are they? Are they, go, are they going to go on uh, honeymoon? Yes, they... Use the degrees of certainty. We'll go. Yes, they will go on uh, honeymoon. Immediately after the wedding, but they haven't told anyone where they are going to go. Very good. The answer is will go. And last number eight. Number eight, let's call. Um, Supanita. Supanita, can you answer number eight? Supanita, Supanita, can you answer number eight? Okay. Um, 
Will they go far away for their honeymoon? They probably won't go. Very good. They probably won't go far. They have only a few days before they need to be back at work. Okay, thank you for helping me answer activity or practice 16. Are you finished writing your answer? Finish? Finish. Okay. Finish. Okay, now let's talk about time clauses. First, let's talk about time clauses. We're going to talk about right now is about future time clauses. And before we talk about future time clauses, mm -hmm. we need to discuss what is a time clause first, okay? Time clauses are used in English to demonstrate to demonstrate a period of time based on an action or event similar to dependent clauses in conditional sentences. We also, uh, we also say time clauses are grammatical units that require subject, verbs, and objects, but they do not always use the same verb rules as the main clause. เราใช้ time clause ในภาษาอังกฤษเพื่อแสดงถึงช่วงเวลาแล้วก็เหตุการณ์การกระทำนะคะคล้ายกับอนุประโยคในประโยคเงื่อนไขโครงสร้างไวยากรณ์ของ time clause ประกอบไปด้วย subject verb แล้วก็ object ค่ะแต่ว่าไม่ได้ใช้กิริยาตัวเดียวกันกับประโยคหลักค่ะ okay next How are we going to identify a time clause? Do you have any idea how are we going to identify time clause? Time clauses are started with adverbs or adverb phrases that show they represent a time. Sometimes also functioning as subordinating conjunction. This includes, oh, this is what, uh, this is very important words you have to uh, remember when we are constructing a time clause. Remember these words, when, after, until, as soon as, and before. These adverbs are uh, very important in identifying a time clause in a future tense. อนุประโยคที่บ่งบอกช่วงเวลาเริ่มต้นด้วยคำวิเศษหรือวลีวิเศษนะคะที่แสดงแทนช่วงเวลาเช่น when ในตอนที่จุด after หลังจาก until จนถึง as soon as ทันทีที่ before ก่อนที่จุดๆ Okay, thank you, teacher. A clause that starts with an adverb of time like this is not usually a complete grammatical idea as they work as subordinating conjunction. Look at this one. It means meaning. Look at my examples here. When the sun sets, before the first lesson begins, after my teacher arrives. These are example of time clauses. But always remember that a clause like this is not a complete sentence. They just work as a subordinating conjunction. They are not complete sentence. ประโยคเหล่านี้นะคะเป็นประโยคตัวอย่างที่ไม่สมบูรณ์ค่ะ When the sun sets จุดจุดเมื่อแพ้าทิตตกดินอะไรต่อเราก็ไม่รู้ Before the first lesson begins ก่อนเริ่มบทเรียนแรกแล้วก็อะไรก็ไม่รู้ After my teacher arrives หลังจากที่ครูของฉันมาถึงจุดจุดเป็นประโยคที่ไม่สมบูรณ์ค่ะเพราะว่ามันยังขาดประโยคหลัก Sorry. <laughs> It's okay, teacher. This sentence, this sentence always remember ah. As own, it works only as a subordinating conjunction. It is not a complete sentence. Although they have a subject and verb and object, none of these are complete ideas as they simply point to a 
time. A time close like this when the sun sets before the first lesson begins, after my teacher arrives, even though that we have a subject and verb and object in the sentence, none of these sentences are complete because they only shows or point a time. ถึงแม้ว่าประโยคเหล่านี้นะคะจะมีประธานแล้วก็กิริยาแต่ว่ามันยังเป็นประโยคที่มีใจความที่ไม่สมบูรณ์ค่ะเพราะว่ามันยังขาดประโยคหลักข้างหลังเนาะที่มาขยายความโอเค this is because when we form a time clause the adverb of time joins two ideas linking the main clause to the time in a dependent Way later on we're going to talk about when we're when we're going to combine two clauses, right? So that we can make a complete thought, a complete sentence. ประโยคที่ไม่สมบูรณ์นี้บ่งบอกแค่ช่วงเวลานะคะแต่ว่าไม่ได้บอกเหตุการณ์หลังจากนั้นจึงทำให้ประโยคเหล่านี้ไม่สมบูรณ์นั่นเองเนาะเพราะว่าประโยคที่บ่งบอกช่วงเวลาเนี่ยต้องเชื่อมโยงกับประโยคหลักจึงจะทำให้ประโยคนั้นมีใจความสมบูรณ์ค่ะ Okay. Now look at this one. The two clauses could be separate sentences without the adverb of time. Consider the following two clauses. Look at this. We have two sentences here. I will master English. When you look at that sentence, it is a complete sentence. I will master English. It's a complete sentence. Another sentence here. I will complete. Every exercise in my textbook. It's also a complete sentence. So we have two sentences here. We have two clauses here, and um, both of the sentences are in are complete. Now, if we're going to use a time clause to make a future clause, this is what we're going to do. This could become a time clause and therefore make the main clause dependent on the timing of the other. This is when, this is where we're going to add when, after, as soon as, and so on and so forth. Look at my example here. If we add the time clause when, when I master English, then we have to put comma. I will complete every exercise in my textbook. Look at this one. A while ago, I will master English is a complete sentence, right? And I will complete every exercise in my textbook is also a complete sentence. Now, if we're going to add, if we're going to add time clause such as or like as, like when, the first sentence is now not complete sentence. When I master English. It will. It becomes a subordinate clause, right? I will complete every exercise in my textbook. So this example is now. These two sentences, two clauses, are now a complete sentence as one. Whereas another example, I will master English. Now, if we put after at the middle of the sentence, we put the time clause after. We can also make again. Another one complete sentences. I will master English after I complete every exercise in my textbook. It's different meaning from the first example. Yet we are making two clauses combined to each other. I will master English. ฉันจะเก่งภาษาอังกฤษ I will complete every exercise in my textbook. ฉันจะทําแบบฝึกหัดทุกอย่างในหนังสือเรียนให้ครบสองประโยคนี้มันแยกกันอยู่ใช่ไหมคะแต่ว่าถ้าเราใส่ uh, time clause เนี่ยหรือว่าคําที่บ่งบอกช่วงเวลาเนี่ยจะทําให้ความหมายในประโยคนั้นเปลี่ยนขึ้นอยู่กับที่เราเลือกใช้คําด้วยอย่างตัวอย่างแรกถ้าเราใช้ when นําหน้า when I master English I will complete every exercise in my textbook อันนี้จะแปลว่าตอนที่ฉันเก่งภาษาอังกฤษแล้วเนี่ยฉันจะทําแบบฝึกหัดทุกอันในหนังสือให้หมดส่วนอีกตัวอย่างหนึ่งก็คือ I will master English after I complete every exercise in my textbook ถ้าเราใช้คําว่า after เนี่ยมันจะได้ว่าฉันจะเก่งภาษาอังกฤษหลังจากที่ฉันทําแบบฝึกหัดทุกอันในหนังสือหมดแล้วค่ะ
ก็คือความหมายมันจะเปลี่ยนซึ่งขึ้นอยู่กับที่เราเลือกใช้คํานั่นเองโอเค thank you teacher Nama always remember kids if we make the other clause as a time clause therefore uh therefore we make the main clause dependent on the timing of the other okay uh, let's answer <clears throat> practice 17 past and future time clauses it's very easy underline the time clauses we just going to underline time clauses. For number one, let me answer number one. Before Bill met Maggie, he was lonely. What is the time clause here? Of course, the word that includes before. Before Bill met Maggie. How about number two? Who wants to answer number two? Ananchai. Ananchai, can you answer number two? What is the answer in number two? What is the time clause in number two? What, what is the time clause in number two? Look at, look at for your time markers. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to identify our time clause. Mm. How about Supanita? Supanita, what is the what is the time clause in the in number two? I should say. Supanita, what is the answer in number two? Why you are not responding, Pratom six? And you, I'm sorry. <laughs> again, 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 Supanita. Until. Until he met Maggie. Very good. The time marker is until. And the correct sentence, until he met Maggie. Very good. How about number three? How about number three? Non, what is the answer in number three? When he met Maggie. Very good. Very easy. When you see the word before, until, when, as soon as, you can easily identify the time clauses. How about uh, Preo, number four? He became a happy person after he met her. What is the time clause? After he met her. Very good. After he met her. It's very easy, right? How about number five? May tawin, number five. <clears throat> okay. Sure. What is the answer, number five? Uh, after they did for a year. Very good. After they dated for a year. How about number six, Pacharamay? How about number six, Pacharamay? Or are you Pacharamay? Okay, let's call another one. Pomiria. Pomiria, number six. What is our time clause in number six? Omiria, uh, where are you? How about Pupakon? Pupakon, what is the time clause in number six? Mm? How about Namchai? Namchai, can you hear me? What is the... What is the time clause in number six? Namchai? Number six, our time clause is? Anyone? As soon. as soon as Bill gets a better job. How about number seven? How about number seven? Anyone? Anyone who wants to volunteer? Number seven? And yes, the pitch. Yes, the pitch. What is the answer? Before they buy a house. Before, Before the they buy a house. Number eight. Number eight. Who wants to volunteer? 
since when I'm calling your name, you are not responding. Number eight, what is the, what is the answer number eight? When they have enough money. When they have enough money. And number nine? After they get married. After they get married. And number 10? Until they die. Until they die. Always in identifying time clauses, always remember those words before, until, when, after, and as soon as. Okay? Always keep that in mind. In identifying time clauses, always remember the words before, until, when, after, as soon as. Okay, now let's answer practice 18. Is it 18? Yes, practice 18. Okay, combine the ideas of the two given sentences into one sentence by using a time clause. Use the word in parentheses to introduce the time clause. Number one is already done. I'm going to finish my homework. Then we use after. After I finish my homework, I'm going to go to bed. How about for number two? I'll finish my homework. Then I'm going to go to bed. How are we going to use it with our time, time marker, time clause until? How are we going to uh, complete the sentence using until? Mm. I'm going to go to bed until I finish my homework. I'm not. I'm going. Sorry. I'm going. Very good. I'm going to go to bed until I finish my homework. Next, number three. Layla will finish her homework. She will catch a movie tonight. And let's use before. Anyone? What? Hmm? Before? Before I before, uh, watch a movie tonight. She, she will finish her homework. Very good. Next, number four. Number four, non. Can you answer number four? Jim will get home tonight. He's going to read the news. Let's use after. Let's start with Jim is going to read the news. What is your time clause? After. After him. After he home tonight. gets home tonight. Very good. Number five. I'll call John tomorrow. I'll ask him to my party. Let's use when. When. I. What do you think? When I call John tomorrow, I will ask him to my party. And number six, Miss Torres will stay at her office tonight. She will finish her report. What do you think? Let's use until. Miss Torres will stay at her office tonight. What is your time clause? Miss Torres will stay at home. I stay at home. Miss Torres will stay at her office tonight. Time clause. What is our time clause? Until. Until she finishes her report. Very good. Next. I will get home tonight. I'm going to take a hot bath. As soon as I get home, what's next? As soon as I get home, 
I'm going to take a hot bath. Okay, finish. Everyone finish? Let's continue no. discussing. No, no. no please, 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 please. One minute. Now, now you know how to identify time clauses. We are going to proceed to future clause and if clause. We are going to proceed to if clause and future clause. Yes. Our next topic after this one, future time clauses and if clauses. We're going to differentiate those things and how are we going to use it in expressing future time. Okay, are you finished? Yeah. Finish? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's talk about future time clauses and if clauses. Okay. Let's start with clauses overview. Of course, if we're going to discuss future and if clauses, let's learn about clauses we already uh, talked about a while ago time clauses but teacher what is clauses or what are i should say what are clauses first a clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb always keep that in mind a clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb Okay. Next, a main clause, we have what we call main clause, no? A main clause can stand alone as a complete sentence. Thank you, teacher Nama. And a dependent clause cannot stand alone and must be used with a main clause. Okay, so we have here main clause, what we call main clause, and dependent clause. Keep that in mind. We will discuss it furthermore. In future time clauses, Future time clauses are dependent clauses. What do we mean by dependent clauses again? What do we mean by dependent clauses? Meaning they cannot, they cannot stand alone. They are not complete sentence when we say dependent clauses. They begin with words such as before, when, while, and after. That is your future time clauses. Before, when, while, after. The verb in the future time clause is in the simple present, even though it has a future meaning. Take note of this, huh? The verb in the future time clause is in the simple present, even though it has a future meaning. Meaning. Next, a future time clause can come before or after the main clause with no change in the meaning. อนุประโยคที่บ่งบอกถึงช่วงเวลาในอนาคตสามารถอยู่ก่อนหรือหลังก็ได้นะคะความหมายไม่เปลี่ยนแปลง last if the future time comes first it is separated from the main clause by a comma แต่ถ้าอนุประโยคที่บ่งบอกถึงอนาคตเนี่ยอยู่ก่อนให้ขั้นด้วยเครื่องหมายจุลภาพหรือว่าลูกน้ำค่ะ okay Always keep that in mind that that is future time clause. Future time clause are dependent clause. They are not complete sentence. They begin words such as before, when, while, and after. Next, 
facts. This is the time, future time clause structure. We have our time word. A while ago, time expression, time word. We have before, until, after. Now, we can also write next to it is the subject. We. Let's start with the first example. Before, we. Verb in present tense. Have other information. You can put another information. Before we have a baby, and then we're going to add the main clause. Main clause is a complete sentence, right? We, before we have a baby, then we add our main clause. We will buy a house. Next, we have here until. Until he wins the lottery, our main clause. He won't quit his job. And last, after we retire, we are going to travel. So, yeah, I know you know, he won't bought him. Show my name and I would not have. So, yeah, lad, before we have a baby, got he loves me, look, main cause, we will buy a house. Talk about the suburban gone. So, yeah, this song, until he wins the lottery, he won't quit his job. ก็คือจนกว่าเขาจะชนะรางวัลลอตเตอรี่จนกว่าเขาจะถูกหวยนั่นแหละเขาจะไม่ลาออกจากงานนะคะและประโยคสุดท้าย after we retire, we are going to travel. ก็คือหลังจากที่เราเกษียณเราจะไปท่องเที่ยวกันค่ะและอันนี้ก็คือตัวอย่างประโยคที่สมบูรณ์เนาะมีทั้งทางคลอสแล้วก็เมนคลอ